Hi, I'm Sue and I'm the pastor here and welcome to our First Presbyterian Church YouTube channel. Today's message is part of our Lent series called Busy, Connecting with an Unhurried God. And this series encourages us to find balance in our lives and connect with what is most meaningful and life-giving. If you find our videos helpful and meaningful, please hit the subscribe button right now. It's right down here, right below this. And stick around after the message and I'll give you a little more info on how you can get involved and be a part of all God is doing here. Our scripture today is from Ecla <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 13. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. God has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, God has put a sense of past and future into their minds yet they cannot find what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and to enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all shall eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. So this is one of my absolute favorite seasons of the year in Nebraska. And if any of you are on Facebook, you know why. I've been taking every opportunity I could to get out west to take pictures of the Sandhill Cranes. And for those of you who might be in the room and certainly are online and may not know this, uh, it, there's about a six to eight week period when about 80% of the entire world's population of Sandhill Cranes funnels through about 80 miles of the Platte River here in Nebraska. And it is just an incredible sight to see and to hear as they come through and they basically fatten up before heading off to their nesting grounds in the Arctic. So that's what I've been doing. And those of you who've been on Facebook, sorry to inundate you with my photos every day. More will be coming later today because I was out there yesterday too. So. Um, but in Nebraska, that is not the only season we have. We don't just have sandhill crane season. We, of course, have planting, and we have harvesting, we have winter and summer, and, of course, the most popular seasons, football and volleyball. And again, for those of you online who may not be around here, you do not schedule a sneeze without knowing when the home games are. That's just what life is like here in Nebraska. But we learn to live our lives and adjust our lives to the seasons that we are in. But the kind of seasons mentioned in Ecclesiastes are not seasons of nature or college sports, but seasons of life. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time for war and a time for peace. Ecclesiastes presents these as a given, these seasons will, will come whether you like them or not, like birth and death. There is a sense of actual resignation in Ecclesiastes as he talks about these seasons. And in fact, I actually would not recommend reading this book 
if you are feeling depressed because the constant refrain that runs throughout this book is things are going to happen whether you like it or not. The good will not always get their reward. The evil will prosper and we all die in the end. There's the book. I know. It's like <laughs> uplifting, isn't it? No. Uh, don't read the book if you are depressed. He does also say, though, several times throughout the book that whatever you do, God intends for you to enjoy this life. Of course, then he prefaces it by saying, but whatever you do to enjoy life, you'll probably get in trouble for it in the end anyway, so do whatever you want, I guess. It's, uh, there really is a sense of resignation and inevitability in the book of Ecclesiastes. It's kind of unique in Scripture. But as I'm looking at this list of seasons that there is a time for at the beginning there uh, that Lynn read. Uh, the reality is, is these are things that we all experience. They are seasons of life. And we have a choice about how we approach them. We can dread them. We can be resigned to them, especially those that we view as negative. I mean, who wants to go through the negative ones? Or we can embrace them. We can be fully present to them. And I think that's maybe the better way for us to live our lives, not running away from the seasons that we don't like, but just embracing everything and seeing what comes to us through them. Because all of these seasons are part of being human. We all have in our lives times when we weep, times when we laugh, when we play, when we pray times when we are seeking and times when we are losing. We look at Jesus. Jesus embraced every season that came to him. When his friend Lazarus died, Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the whole Bible. Now, Jesus, God incarnate, could have just said, I don't like the fact that Lazarus died. I'm going to snap my fingers. Lazarus is going to come out of that tomb and, and nobody has to be sad. But instead, he allowed days to pass before he did that. And he allowed himself and those around him to experience the full weight of grief that comes when someone you love dies. Each of these seasons has a spark of holiness, but we have to allow ourselves to dive deeply into them and experience them. Even the season to tear, I was looking through this list, and this is always an interesting one, a time to tear, time to sow. A better translation is really time to rend, and if you know your Old Testament history, rending, rending your clothes, which later you would then sew up, was a visible act of repentance. It was a way of owning your mistakes and not hiding them. Because if you're tearing your clothes, the entire community can see what you are doing. It's a visible apology, might be one way of looking at it. But it was an ancient way of saying to God and to whoever you may have hurt that you acknowledge that you have done something or you have failed to do something that resulted in the rending of a relationship. Whenever we take seriously our own actions that lead to hurting another, Christ is there. Christ is the one who came to heal broken relationships and make all things new. I think most of us would rather skip that season of tearing or rending. But it is perhaps the holiest of all because when we do take seriously the ways that we contribute to the brokenness in our world and in our relationships, and then we turn our hearts to efforts towards healing, the sowing, then Christ is realized in our midst. Christ is at work doing what we cannot do. In fact, by embracing the season of tearing or repentance, we stand in the face of a world that tries to tell us that ignore your mistakes, pretend like you never made them, whitewash them, pretend all is well. We don't want anyone to know we made a poor decision, so we're going to make an excuse for it. We're going to blame somebody else, or we're going to try to explain it away and show that, no, it really was a really good thing to do that we did. That's what our world is like, and that's what it tries to tell us. Our mistakes should not ever be acknowledged. In fact, we actually get pushback from that here in church, too. 
Um, we don't have it in the bulletin, ironically enough, for this season of Lent, but we often have a prayer of confession, and sometimes I put it in as a, a prayer of brokenness, and, and I get pushback from those titles because that is so negative. We don't want to have to come to church and acknowledge that we might have done something that might have hurt somebody else or this world we live in. And so, we don't want to put it in there because we don't want to offend people. But of course, we live in a world that doesn't want anybody to feel bad. Participation trophies, do I need to say anything more? Yeah, we don't want anybody to feel bad. We don't want anybody's feelings to be hurt. We don't really want to confront people with things that, that they have done wrong, and we don't want anyone to confront us. So, we certainly don't want that to happen in church, right? And yet, when we don't acknowledge, when we don't embrace that season for rending, we live in a false world, and we lie to ourselves. And things are never going to get better in our relationships that are broken and in our world that is broken. And so let's acknowledge that we are human. Let's repent. If you remember last week, we talked about what repent means. It means to change your way of thinking. So let's change our way of thinking about what's not right about this world we live in. What's not right in the way we are walking through this world? And let's be a part of healing this world, of sowing it, of bringing it back together. But we have to start with ourselves. And it doesn't happen if we try to just skip over that season. There's another season in there that got my attention, the season, the season of breaking down. I think most of us have been broken down at one point or another. I've told you about one of my past churches that almost did me in, one of the worst experiences I've had in my life. But I stayed there seven years, four years longer than what all my friends were telling me I should. And I learned so much about myself there. And it, it humbled me and it broke me, but in a good way. Didn't feel like it at the time, of course. But I wouldn't be the pastor I am today, and I wouldn't be the person I am today if I had not gone through that season and reflected on it. So even those really negative seasons can be a blessing to us, depending on how we embrace them. How about a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together? Jesus was all about tearing down walls, taking down those stones and getting rid of them, taking down those things that divide us. There, that is always in season. The gathering of stones recalls the stone markers built by the Israelites to mark covenants between individuals and nations, often agreements that were made. It's a visible reminder every time they pass by that monument that there is a relationship between those peoples. So the question for you is, what are the walls you need to tear down that separate you from others? And what are the monuments you need to build to remind you of your connection to others? There is a season for each one of those things. Each of these seasons Ecclesiastes mentioned are times when we can encounter Christ and we can grow. It's there are times where we can experience the fullness of what it is to be human and times when we can attend to the, the healing of relationship and the strengthening of bonds. So, getting back to our theme for our, our Lent series, we need to stop in the midst of these seasons. We need to breathe, we need to take that breath, and we need to notice what's going on around us. What's going on in you? Because Christ is present. Don't go through life avoiding those things that make you human and that connect you to each other. Rather, embrace them. Let them become a part of who you are. See where Christ is in those seasons and let it change how you walk through the world. But unlike Ecclesiastes, who was resigned to all of these seasons coming in their own time as if there was nothing he could do about it, 
we do have some control over when these seasons come. We do have a say, even if the world around us is telling us it's a season for this, sometimes we're going to look and say, no, this is the season we are in. And I'm thinking of what Ecclesiastes said about there's a season of hate. Now, as Christians, we are told we should love and not hate, right? The idea that there's an appropriate season for hate is challenging because hate is something we generally like to see less of in the world. Turn on the news these days and you will hear stories of hate. Someone who is so angry that they fail to see the humanity of the person right in front of them. Just this past week, a 20-something-year-old Amazon driver had parked in a handicapped parking spot to deliver a package. Shouldn't it have been there? Handicap, a person came up with a handicap plate and was quite angry that the Amazon driver was there. Confronted him, there was a scuffle, he pulled out a gun and shot that driver. He is now paralyzed for life. That's the ugly side of hate. There is no season for that. Racism is the ugly side of hate. White supremacy is the ugly side of hate. Now, there are times where we are told that the loving thing to do is just to let things slide. Because love is always in season, right? Meet these people with love, and over time you may change them. But what happens if that's all we ever do? Another cross is burned on a lawn. Another argument is settled with a gun. Another child is bullied for being different. I actually believe there is a time, a season for hate. But it's a kind of hate that rises against injustice. The kind of hate that stands up for those who need someone to stand beside them in the face of those who would deny their humanity. There is a season for hate. But it is hate born of God's justice. And there is never a convenient time for that season. But justice is always in season. So Ecclesiastes may have been resigned to seasons he felt he could do nothing about. But each of those seasons is a part of life. Mourning, dancing, seeking, losing, silence, speaking, love, and even hate. And each of those seasons is holy. For as we move through those times, we experience life to its fullest and when we don't rush through them and we don't deny them, we experience God in the living of those seasons. So what season are you living in right now? What does it ask of you? How can you embrace it? Are you willing to be transformed by it? Don't be resigned to it. Because they are holy times, and Christ is at work in them and in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's message. We believe we weren't meant to do life alone. We are made to do it with others. And so if you're looking for a community of people who will meet you and welcome you as you are, then Click on the link in our description and head over to our website, fpclincoln.org. Find out how you can join one of our small groups or studies and get connected to other people. Or if you just want some more information about the church or want to talk to someone, contact us through our website. Someone from our team will reach out to you. Every week, we get to hear stories about people finding God through these messages. And none of this would be possible without the amazing generosity of the people of First Presbyterian Church. If you want to be a part of helping these life-changing messages continue to go online every week, you can make a donation and give by clicking on the link in the description below. Or just click on the Give link on our website. All the ways you can give will be there. We thank you for your generosity. We truly can't do this without you. And thank you for be taking time to watch our video today. Be sure to look around our YouTube channel and check out the other messages to help you on your journey. 
and be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you know when we, we release new videos. We love you and I hope you have a great day.